أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا أيها الكافرون لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد ولا أنا عابد ما عبدتم ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد لكم دينكم ولي دين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسك إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس صدق الله العظيم
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين ونفعنا اللهم بالقران وذكر الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل الا ما جاءته سهلا وانت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن اذا شئت سهلا سهلا اللهم اجنا من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا واسلحنا لنا شاننا كله لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد واله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم جزاك الله خير جوينا يس توداي ان شاء الله ام سيدي سعيد ويل جيف ا بريف انترو تو ذا شادليه طريقه ان شاء الله اند uh, intro into what we're going to be reciting today, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all of you from the Reflection Path team. Um, and um, we're honored. We're honored to be able to facilitate these gatherings again for this blessed month of Rabi'ul Al Awal and uh, to celebrate the Milad Sharif of our blessed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah bless you all for taking the time to come here this evening, inshallah. Um, I'd just like to give a brief introduction to the Shadili Tariqa. We're, we're all brothers and sisters from the Shadili Tariqa. We're murids of Sheikh Muhammad Ali Yaqubi, Hafiz Ahabullah Ta'ala. And um, to give you some background on the Shadili Tariqa, it was founded by Imam Abu Hassan al-Shadili, Rahmatullah Alayhi, uh, who was born in Egypt uh, around about the 13th century. And uh, amongst um, the um, wazaif, uh, etc., that they have uh, handed down to uh, the Tariqa uh, is the Hizbul Bahr and the Wildul Am. We're going to start off with the Wild, uh, Hizbul Bahr first of all, also known as the Litany of the Sea, and it is uh, comprised of Quranic ayahs and supplications from the Quran and the Sunnah, and uh, it uh, grants protection to all of those who recite it. Uh, it protects the grounds upon which it's been recited and all of those uh, who listen to it as well, inshallah. So please do join us if you know it. Um, I think we may have some um, booklets. Do we need some on the brother's side? If we could just have a few on the brother's side, please. on page 25 of the uh, booklets. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا علي يا عظيم 
يا حليم يا عليم أنت ربي وعلمك حسبي فنعم الرب ربي ونعم الحسب حسبي تنصر من تشاء وأنت العزيز الرحيم نسألك العزمة في الحركات والسكنات والكلمات والإرادات والخطرات من الشكوك والذنون والأوهام الساترة للقلوب عن مطالعة الغيوب فقد ابتلي المؤمنون وزلزلوا زلزالا شديدا وإذ يقول المنافقون والذين في قلوبهم مرد ما وعدنا الله ورسوله إلا غرورا فثبتنا وانصرنا وسخر لنا هذا البحر كما سخرت البحر لموسى وسخرت النار لإبراهيم وسخرت الجبال والحديد لداود وسخرت الريح والشياطين والجن لسليمان وسخر لنا كل بحر هو لك في الأرض والسماء والملك والملكوت وبحر الدنيا وبحر الآخرة وسخر لنا كل شيء يا من بيده ملكوت كل شيء كاف حايا عين صاد كاف حايا عين صاد كاف حايا عين صاد انصرنا فإنك خير الناصرين وافتح لنا فإنك خير الفاتحين واغفر لنا فإنك خير الغافرين وارحمنا فإنك خير الراحمين وارزقنا فإنك خير الرازقين وحدنا ونجنا من القوم الظالمين وحب لنا ريحا طيبة كما هي في علمك وانشرها علينا من خزائن رحمتك واحملنا بها حمل القرامة مع السلامة والعافية في الدين والدنيا والآخرة إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم يسر لنا أمورنا مع الراحة لقلوبنا وأبداننا والسلامة والعافية في ديننا ودنيانا وكلنا صاحبا في سفرنا وخليفة في أحلنا واتنس على وجوه أعدائنا وامسخهم على مقامتهم فلا يستطيعون المدي ولا المجيء إلينا ولو نشاء لتمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبسرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مقامتهم فما استطاعوا مديا ولا يرجعون ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنزل قوما ما أنزل أباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناكهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مخمهون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون شاهت الوجوه شاهت الوجوه شاهت الوجوه وعنت الوجوه للهي القيوم وقد خاب من حمل ظلما طاسين حاميم عين صين قاف مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان هاميم 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 هم الأمر وجاء النصر فعلينا لا ينصرون هاميم تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز العليم غافر الذنب وقابل التوب الشديد العكاب زدت لا إله إلا هو إليه المصير بسم الله بابنا تبارك حيتاننا ياسين سقفنا كاف حايا عين صاد كفايتنا هاميم 
عين سين قاف همايتنا فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم ستر العرش مسؤول علينا وعين الله نازرة إلينا بحول الله لا يقدر علينا والله من ورائهم محيط بل هو قرآن مجيد في لوح محفوظ فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين حسب الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم حسب الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم حسب الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة I forgot to mention earlier that, that uh, Hizb al Bahr is normally recited after Asr uh, daily, so it's uh, one of the two main litanies uh, of the Shadili Tariqa. We're going to follow now with a, a shortened version of the Wild al Am, the, um, uh, the daily litany which comprises of Istighfar um, and Salat uh, Salah al Nabi, and uh, finally Tahli la ilaha illallah. Um, so it's a, a short inversion. We're going to recite 33 times uh, for each one, and then uh, we'll close with uh, three times Surah Ikhlas and then Al Fatiha. And then at the end, if you make dua uh, for and um, convey the Isali Sahab to the noble court of our Master Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, also convey the Isali Sahab to those who have uh, departed from this world. Um, and um, to your sheikh, to your teachers, to your parents, inshallah. So uh, we'll begin that now. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim Wa ma tuqaddimu li anfusikum min khayrin tajiduhu inda Allah Huwa khayran wa a'azama ajrah Wa astaghfiru Allah إن الله غفور رحيم أستغفر الله 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 
استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم واتوب اليه ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عزمه ذاتك في كل وقت وحين فاعلم انه لا اله الا الله لا اله الا الله لا
سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم محمد سيد الكونين وثقلين والفريقين من عرب ومن عجم مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم هو الحبيب الذي ترجى شفاعته لكل هول من الأحوال مقتحم مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم دعا إلى الله فالمستمسك نبيه مستمسك نبي حبل غير منفسم مولاي صلي بك خير الخلق كلهم ثم الرضا أن أبي بكر وأن عمر وأن علي وأن عثمان ذي الكرم مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم يا رب بالمصطفى بلغ ما قصيدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم يا رب بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم يا رب بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم الحمد لله 
Salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Um, just before Sheikh Tariq Ali Saab comes on, just a brief introduction. So Sheikh Tariq Ali Saab um, started his studies in Jamia Al Karam and then moved on to Islamabad University and also studied at Bira Sharif and uh, has taught in Jamia Al Karam as well. He's the author of many books including the Qur'an that, that you see in front of you there. It's a simple translation of the Qur'an in English. He's also translated uh, the, uh, a, a text, a book uh, known as Mukhtasar al-Quduri, which is you know, the, the sort of pinnacle of Hanafi fiqh. Um, so he's translated this. He's also translated many works of Pir Zada Saab from Jamia al-Karam, Dr. Tahir al-Qadri Saab, he's translated many books. There are books that are currently being translated and been released. So his khidmat to the deen are, you know, beyond comprehension, alhamdulillah. We're very fortunate to have Sheikh here today to bless us with some wisdom. I first met Sheikh um, on our trip last year to Palestine. Sheikh was uh, one of the tour guides on the uh, on the trip. And uh, we, we quite we quickly got to a sort of accompany Sheikh, sit with the Sheikh, and ask him questions and take every opportunity to sit with him after dinner at night and in the morning and whenever we can. And I even had a list of things to talk to Sheikh about. So Alhamdulillah, we're blessed. We're quite blessed to have such a uh, you know a scholar that has done many khidmat for the Deen, you know, for the UK, for the Muslims. So let's try and uh, benefit from his. Uh, from his company, his words today. May Allah give us the tawfiq to uh, implement and act upon what he says today. Sheikh. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Hilladhi Faddala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadan ala al-alameen jami'a وأقامه يوم القيامة للمذنبين شفيعا فصلى الله تعالى وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى كل من هو محبوب ومضي لديه صلاة طبقة وتدوم بدوام الملك الحي القيوم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده 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 لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأمته أجمعين قد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد وفرقانه الحميد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لآخر الآية صدق الله العظيم وقال تعالى في شأن حبيبه مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه وامته اجمعين كما تحب وترضى ان تصلي وتسلم وتبارك عليهم يا رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم first and foremost i'd like to thank uh, brothers amir brother iftikhar and the others uh, those whose names i do not know as well for arranging these uh, beautiful uh, gatherings i understand they've been doing it for a while now uh, particularly in the month of the beautiful month of rabiul awwal sharif the month of the birth of the beloved sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam. Also, um, gratitude goes out to the young uh, brother who did the recitation of the Noble Quran. Jazakallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you immensely in your recitation and your love for the Noble Quran. And thereafter, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless uh, the Shazali brothers. Well, anybody who's a Shazali is a Shazali brother. And anybody who's not a Shazali is also a Shazali brother directly or indirectly there. We have a, all have a connection. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every single uh, one of them for uh, reviving uh, that spiritual, um, uh, you could say, uh, slumber that we tend to get every once in a while. Uh, and we need to wake that up. So the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wakes us up. It actually wakes us up spiritually. And that we actually feel that. It's difficult to explain because it's spiritual. We can only explain things that are physical. You know, somebody has a headache, how is he going to explain it? He just says he has a headache. Unless you've exp experienced it yourself, you wouldn't know what that is. So uh, spiritual aspect is, is uh, very similar as well. And uh, thank you very much, Brother uh, uh, Kamran Akhtar, for that embellished um, introduction. I, I'm not all that. I, I Believe me, he's just adding lots of words to that. 
But uh, the du'as that we make, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us sincere to his cause. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us do things that are going to be helpful for the ummah and helpful for other people as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to keep us sincere in his way as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us the best of this world and the next world, especially in attempting, at least we should try, at least we should try to serve his deen. At least we should try, not just gain something for ourselves, but try and give something to others, leave something for other people as well, from the deen. So I was known as uh, among the students as one of those, the, uh, uh, the lazy ones, the not uh, very bright ones and you know, amongst them. But Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us uh, uh, working hard and you know, subhanAllah, Allah will bless us the goodness in this world and definitely in the next world as well. Uh, the beautiful ayah of the Noble Quran that I have had the honor to recite in your presence uh, of Surah Al-Ahzab verse number 21, it's, uh, it sums up the entire life of the Beloved Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. This is the seerah and the surah of the Beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Seerah is the conduct, seerah is our character, and surah is the essence, is the, is the uh, um, appearance of every person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, he has just summed it all up. He says, That for each and every single one of you in the life, in the person, in the sunnahs, in the practice of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is a beautiful example. It's a beautiful example. Now, in this ayah, Allah does not say he is the best example. No. Although we know he's the best example, he's the best model, there's nothing better than him. But Allah did not say that. Allah said he is one of the beautiful examples for you. He said that about other prophets as well. So why did Allah say one of them? He did not say he is the best. Because very openly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to show us the human side of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wasallam. If you want to be a maths teacher, who, whom are you going to emulate? Which person will you copy? First of all, you will you know, imagine your own maths teachers. Would you imagine the Prophet as a maths teacher? We wouldn't, would we? He came as a guide, of course. He, if he was to do maths, he would be the best mathematician this world has ever known. But he came to guide us for something else. So he is the best guide, he is the best example in the aspects that need our, need our success in this world and in the next world. Maths is not that. Maths is an aspect of life, it helps us. But without maths, people can exist. But without good character, there's no existence. Without good character, there's no significance. Without good character, there's no pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he is one of, he is uswatul hasana, not al-uswatul hasana. Those of you who know a little bit of Arabic grammar, I've studied a little bit of that as well. So he did not say he is the best example for you. He said he's one of the best examples for you. So if you want to learn maths, you're not going to look at the, the uh, seerah of the Prophet You're going to follow your maths teachers. If you're going to learn, for example, Hezbul Bahar. We recited Hezbul Bahar, subhanAllah, Zakmullah ta'ala for the brothers. But did the Prophet leave for us here, there is Hezbul Bahar for you? No. If the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they say he is the best example for you, there would be no Hezbul Bahar today. Everybody would be just sitting here just reciting the Quran. Why? We would say that's enough. Allah said it. But Allah did not say he is the best example. Allah said he is one of the best examples. Uswatun Hasana. He is a good example for you. Which is why he left it open. He says the Sahaba, they are examples for you as well. He said the Ahlul Bayt, they are examples for you as well. The awliya, they are examples for you as well. The four imams, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shah, etc. They are imams for you as well. The imams of Tasawwuf, Imam Abu Hassan al-Shazali, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, etc. etc. They are all examples for us as well. So the door is left open that we can sometimes see these exemplars, these examples in other people as well. For children, who is the first example for a child? It is their parents. Their parents. A boy wants to be like his father. He'll see his father fixing something. 
So the son will pick, pick up a spoon and pretend he's fixing something as well. Yeah, he sees uh, a daughter will see her mother cooking, so she will pick up something and pretend she is cooking as well. Why? Because for the child, the parent is the best example. Then they go out to school and they see their teachers and say, wow, my teacher knows this and my mother might, might not know this, my father might not know this, and they become their uh, heroes, they become their examples. So begin, they begin to follow that. And then they go out into the wider, wider world, high school, they began, uh, begin to befriend others and start copying one another. So th this continues. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left it open for us because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa his entire life is an example for us, of course. Every single aspect of it is an example for us. But we have other people around us who are examples for us. Our Sheikh, you know, our peer sub, yeah, like Sheikh Abul Huda, uh, Muhammad al-Yaqubi, hafizahullah ta'ala, as well, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Yahya al-Nenawi, hafizahullah ta'ala, as well, and, and many, many around the world as well, um, from different parts of the world. They are all our examples and models. We emulate them, we follow them. How many of us have seen the beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Nobody can say with conviction. Well, it, not for ev everybody's sake anyway. That even though some might have seen the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a dream or even in the state of wakefulness, but generally speaking, we haven't. Generally speaking, we haven't. But we have seen our pirsa. We have seen our parents. We have seen our teachers. We have seen our shuyukh. We can at least emulate them. How did the Prophet ﷺ pray? I don't know. There's many ways, many different hadiths. So how should I pray? Well, you just follow your teacher. The one who teaches you how to pray, just follow him. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left that open. Uswatun Hasana. What is the meaning of Uswa? It says in the Quran, Qad kana fi Rasulillahi Uswatun Hasana. What is the meaning of Uswa? Well, Uswa is uh, an example that others follow. Okay, for example, um, the first time someone, someone made a, uh, something to drink out of. People used to drink out of their hands. First time in history someone made something, a receptacle, maybe just a shell from a, a coconut or whatever, and they put liquid into it and they drank from it. And then somebody else came along and said, well, I'm going to make one, something different than that, better one, I'll make it mine. And they carved it out of uh, wood. Then someone else came, came along and he said, well, okay, uh, I will make it out of mud. So they make it out of mud, they let it dry, and they drink from there. Okay, terracotta type of cup. And somebody else comes along and makes it out of china, makes it out of some ceramic material. Someone makes it out of metal later on in the Iron Age. And someone makes it out of glass. It is the same thing as that coconut shell from which someone drank out of many, many years ago, centuries ago. So what is the prototype? What are they all copying? It is that coconut shell. The very first tool that anybody ever used to put water into and drink from, that is the prototype. In Arabic, that is known as uswa. So that is uswa. It is a good uswa it is because it, it's beneficial. So as far as we are concerned with regard to drinking water and using a tool, that Coconut shell is uswatun hasana for us. That coconut is uswatun hasana for us. But when it comes to living our lives, what is the uswatun hasana? What should we copy? Some people will copy the way the Prophet wasallam prayed. They try and copy as best as they can. Someone will take other hadiths and they'll try to pray uh, like him as well. Some will raise their hands all the, of the time. Some will say ameen loud. Some will say ameen silently. Some will be very strict in covering their, their head when they are praying. Some will be a little bit relaxed in that regard. And they all related to the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because he is uswatun hasana. He is an example for all of us. We are all relating it back to our teachers that my teacher taught it like this. His teacher taught it to him like that. His teacher taught it to him like that. All the way going back centuries to that one person the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is our exemplar, he is our model, he is our prototype. The very first thing that we make and everything else is copied of that, it is a prototype. Someone got some sheets of paper and put them together and said, well, I've put sheets of paper together. 
everybody liked it, so they started copying that. Somebody put a cover on it. Somebody make it, made it bigger. Somebody made it smaller. And they started calling that uh, bunch of paper which is stapled together, they started calling it book. That's all it was. Sheets of paper put together, and we call it a book. And they started doing that. But where does it relate to? That very first instance when somebody got some sheets of paper together and, and they stapled them together or joined them together with thread or whatever and they called it a book. Now every other book that we have, whether it's bound or not bound, whether it has a colored um, cover, whether it has no cover, it goes back to that particular book that we started off first. That is the model, that is the prototype. As far as human existence is concerned, as far as our amal in this world is concerned, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he is the prototype. He is the model. He is something that we should all emulate and imitate. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ hasana. You have the best model. You have the best example. You have a beautiful exemplar in the life, in the character of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, Coming to the 21st century, we are in the 21st century. Look at us, around us, and lots of people are competing in different ways. Yeah? Mainly it's to do with money, but there are lots of other ways that people are competing. One of the ways where people are competing is their image. People say, look what I'm wearing. Okay, you'll see influencers on YouTube trying to sell certain products and make money out of it. And other, they want other people to be like them. You know, liposuction, people injecting things into their faces, into their bodies to make them look different, to change their features. People uh, skimming down their teeth and then adding s something on top of their teeth to make them look whiter than white, unnaturally white. Yet people are doing it, yeah? People are, uh, you know, changing their whole appearance Whole, uh, their whole appearance, change, you know, they're bleaching their skin, changing their hair, people planting hair into their head which does not even belong to them. Yeah, people are doing these things. Why? In order to please others, in order to impress the public, in order to get more people praising them. Yeah, that's all it is. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, well, the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he said, Regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwirukum wa amwalikum. So these are the two things I mentioned. Number one, your appearance and image. Secondly, it's all about money. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does not look at your, uh, your appearance. He does not look at your faces. He does not look at what you are wearing as long as it is according to the Sharia, which is essential. But He does not look at what uh, expensive and lavish clothing you are wearing. Whether you go to um, what is it, Harrods is still one of the most expensive stores or the, whether you go to uh, Primark or anything even cheaper. Primark is actually getting more expensive. They're doing, they're doing well. Um, uh, the pound has uh, dropped against uh, world currencies so that's going to have a, an effect as well. May Allah protect us all, inshallah. So, inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa amwalikum. Allah doesn't look at what you look uh, what you uh, look like, what are your images, what you wear. And Allah does not even look at, uh, look at how much bank balance you have or how wealthy you are. But what do we humans do? We start looking at people, oh, look at so-and-so. Look at what they are wearing. What have they done to their hair? I want to do it like that. What have they done to their eyebrows? I want to do it like that. Why do we want to do it like that? We need to do it like Allah wants us to do it. We need to do things that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa wants us to do. But this hadith goes on. And he explains to us what we should be doing. Walakin, but Allah yanzuru ila qulubikum wa amalikum. But Allah looks at your hearts. By hearts it means your intentions. You know, if somebody goes to the masjid to pray, subhanAllah, it's a good thing, isn't it? But if somebody goes to the masjid to pray, to show off to his friend that my friend is going to see me going there, and he's going to say, wow, so and so is so pious, he prays in the masjid. Is that a good intention or a bad intention? It's a bad intention, isn't it? Okay, it's one of the uh, uh, signs of shirk or polytheism, the greatest sin, to show off when you are doing something for the sake of Allah. 
Because then you are not doing it for the sake of Allah, you're doing it for yourself. So you're not worshipping Allah, you're worshipping yourself. So Allah says that he, well the Prophet Sallallahu says that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he looks at your hearts, meaning he looks at your intentions and your motives and what you really want to do, what are your um, real intentions, why you are doing that particular act. doesn't matter how good it is or how bad it might be. Look at Sayyidina Khadr alayhi salam uh, and, and the certain things he did in the presence of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam being a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who did not know what Sayyidina Khadr alayhi salam was doing. He saw him destroying a boat and those people had helped them. Suppose you're about to drown in a flood and somebody comes along in a boat to help. You jump onto the boat and you say, oh, thank you very much, you saved my life. And instead of paying them, you, you break the boat and walk off. Would that be a good thing or a bad thing? For our sake, apparently it's a bad thing. But Sayyidina Khadr al-Islam did that because he knew things that Musa al-Islam did not know. So as far as the intention is concerned, Musa al-Islam did not know the intention of Sayyidina Khadr al-Islam. Because the Sharia of them both was different. The message of them both was different. The destination of them both was different. So it's very, very important to keep our intentions clean. وَآمَالِكُمْ And your actions. SubhanAllah, and your actions. And this is uh, the essence of the seerah. The essence of the entire life of the Prophet ﷺ. And that is an explanation of the ayah of the Qur'an that I recited to you. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حسنة. It is in the beloved Messenger Muhammad ﷺ that you have the best, a best example, a very good example. Okay, and in, in what? I mean, is it the, the way he looked, the way he walked and talked? Well, all of that, not just, not his uh, uh, created being, because that's in the hands of Allah, we cannot change that. But in his character, in his character and the things that he was doing to help us follow the Quran and his sunnah. So the entire gist of the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ is in this last word of this hadith. Last word of this hadith. Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwadikum wa amwalikum. Allah does not look at your image. He does not look at your faces. Wa amwalikum. He does not look at how wealthy you are. Walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa amwalikum. But Allah looks at your hearts, your intentions, your motivations. Wa amwalikum. And Allah looks at your actions. He looks at your character. How good are you in your behavior towards those you know? How good are you in your behavior towards those you do not know? Look at the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Even in his youth, even in his youth, he was the best of the best. You know, nowadays we see youngsters. Some of them they might be misbehaving. We, th we think that oh, they are young. When they get older, they, they'll be better. They will improve. Their character will will sort itself out. When they're young, everybody does this. But no, everybody does not do that. Everybody does not misbehave when they are young. The beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A fantastic example as he is, as Allah has said it, when he was very young, and some of you mentioned maybe he might have been 17 years of age. Look at what our 17 year olds are doing. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even at that young age, he joined a group. He joined, there was no police force in Makkah Mukarramah. There was zulm, there was cruelty, there was crime being committed everywhere. So the Prophet ﷺ, he got like-minded youngsters together and he says, let's all gather at the Kaaba and let us all agree that whenever there's something bad taking place here in Makkah, we will all get together I will make sure that that bad thing does not take place. We will combat it. We will be the police force of Makkah Mukarrama. And that was known as Hizbul, uh, his, uh, Hilful Fudul. That group that he formed was called Hilful Fudul. That was the police force that the Prophet ﷺ formed in Makkah Mukarramah. And later in Medina Munawwara, when he was asked about it, he said, you know what, yeah, if something like that was formed today, I would be the first person to join it again. It was such an uh, impactful group at that time. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he was the best in every single um, mold that you can think of. He was the best husband. He was the best husband. He never scolded any of his wives. And he used to say, uh, So the best of you are those who are best in your families. And I am the best in my family. So if you want to be the best, this goes for 
men and women, if you want to be the best and follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then you have to be the best in your character and in your behavior towards your families. And see the Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she, she mentioned, Inna min akmalil mu'minina imanan. You know, our iman, is it complete or not complete? We don't know. We try to make it complete. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said that the person whose iman is the most complete, his faith is the best. Who is that person? He is ahsanuhum khuluqan wa altafuhum bi ahlihi. Is the one who is the best to his family. The one who is kindest to his family, his iman is the most complete. Subhanallah, this is the, the mold of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a father. Remember, for many years, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a, a single parent. He was a single parent for many years. And he was looking after his younger daughters when his beloved wife, Sayyida Khadija Al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha wa alayhi salam passed away. And he used to look after his young daughters. He used to cook for them, clean for them. He was the best father. He was the best husband, the best father. And he was the best neighbor. You know who his neighbor was? He was the worst of all creation, you could say. Abu Lahab. So bad was Abu Lahab that an entire surah of the Quran has been revealed against him. Tabbat yada Abi Lahabin watab. May his hands perish, may he perish, may he be destroyed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an entire surah against him. That's how bad he was. And he was a neighbor of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when the Prophet sallallahu would be cooking for his daughters, you know what Abu Lahab would do? He would throw dirt into that pot. He would put dirt into the pot. He would throw other uh, things like intestines of animals, the entrails of animals. He would throw them into the pot as well. Thorns he would throw in uh, front of the door of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to go for fajr prayer, he used to fall into those thorns and blood and... You know, his clothes used to rip and blood out of, you know, coming from his uh, body. But the Prophet Sallallahu never swore at him, never said anything bad. Only thing he used to say is, what kind of neighbors are you? What kind of neighbors are you? Yeah, imagine our neighbor do that. What do we do? Yeah. But the Prophet Sallallahu showing us how to be a good neighbor. Subhanallah. He was the best of leaders. In Makkah Mukarramah, it was... Uh, quite uh, a bit of a fashion really, a trend to be crafty, to lie, to cheat, to be a fraudster. So people used to do things like that and they used to think, you know, I'm, I'm doing really good. Yeah, they used to be proud of their uh, misdeeds. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was known as a sadiq and al-ameen in Makkah. Exactly the opposite of what the trend was. The most truthful person, he would not even lie even if his life was at risk. Al-Amin, his enemies, those who wanted to kill him, they used to bring things to him and they used to say, can you look after this for us please? And the Prophet Sallallahu used to look after those things for them. Yet those very people wanted to kill him. The Prophet Sallallahu known as As-Sadiq and Al-Amin. We live in a society where such uh, negativity is becoming common. If we want, want to follow the beautiful Uswa Hassan of the beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it would be a nice idea to start off trying to be known within our communities as as sadiq and Al-Ameen. If somebody points our finger, oh, there's that person that we all like, but that person speaks the truth. Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing? Wouldn't it be wonderful that we, we are all, you know, we always break each other's trust. You told me a secret, I told everybody. But that person, you tell him a secret, he will take it to his grave with him. He won't tell anybody. That's Al-Ameen. Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing to be remembered by? And that is how the Prophet Sallallahu wants us to be remembered as well. And there are many, many other things I, I could go on uh, talking about, but I think we are a little short of time as well. The Prophet Sallallahu his worst enemies, they tried to kill him and he's forgiving them. He's lying under a tree, a man comes with a sword, tried to kill the Prophet Sallallahu and the Prophet Sallallahu forgave him. He did not force him to become Muslim. He picked up the sword and said to him, My Allah saved me, who is going to save you? And that person said, Nobody can save me. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, That Allah who saved me from you is the same Allah who is going to save you from me, even though you do not believe in him. 
that person left. Later on, that person became Muslim. In Taif, the Prophet sallallahu is preaching to, to the people about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about being good. And the people start throwing stones at him. And he starts bleeding from head to toe. His blessed shoes are full of blood. And the angels come. They say, Ya Rasulullah, tell us we will destroy these people. We'll get these mountains and we'll throw them on top of these people. They will be destroyed forever. And the Prophet sallallahu you know what he said? Innama bu'ithu rahmatan. I have been sent as a mercy. I haven't been sent as a punishment. I have not been sent as a torment. I have been sent as a mercy. Somebody across the street swears at us. What do we do? We try to flick through our vocabulary of words that could be a little bit more extreme than what they've said. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would not even frown. He would just say, May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless you. He would forgive his worst enemies. And look at the conquest of Makkah. The conquest of Makkah, the people are there afraid that today Muhammad وسلم, is going to slaughter us. He's going to wipe us out. But the Prophet وسلم, you know what he says to them? La tathriba alaykum al yom. Today there's no blame on you. Off you go. You are all free. There was no prison. Remember the prison service in Islam started in the time of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab There was no prison. So the Prophet وسلم, he said, off you go. You are all free. Those who want to leave Makkah may leave Makkah. Those who want to stay in Makkah may stay in Makkah. And they became Muslim, most of them. The Prophet وسلم, like I mentioned, the best neighbor. How many neighbors do we have? Does anybody have a wild guess how many neighbors we might have? See, now, that might, you might have a number in your mind. See, the Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She said that your closest neighbor is the one whose front door is closest to your front door. And that is because back in those days, there was no back door. I mean, back doors, you'll find them here in the UK. Even then, this is pretty modern as well. You go to many countries, like even uh, in uh, like uh, posh cities like Islamabad, for example. They won't have a back door. They still, they only have front doors. They might have a backyard or something or a, lead, a door leading to it. But generally speaking, every village, every city, every house only had a front door. There were no back doors. So see, the Aisha was speaking in that, in those terms, and still applies to us today. The front door that is closest to your front door, they are your immediate neighbors. However, they are not your only neighbors. We have to look after all our neighbors. The Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that your neighbor can send you to Jannat, to paradise, and your neighbor can send you to hell. On the day of judgment, your neighbor will be asked about you. Your, they will ask, the angels will ask, Allah will ask your neighbor, what kind of neighbor was this person? This Muslim, this person who used to recite the Quran, this person who used to go to the masjid, what kind of neighbor was he? If they say good things about you, then you are good. If they say bad things about you, then you are bad. So make sure you keep your neighbors happy but who are your neighbors just your, the one whose front door is closest to yours the one across you someone asked Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha you know does everybody have a smartphone these days yeah I'd like you to pull out your smartphones just for a few moments please did you know that your smartphone also has this app built in and it's, it's called a calculator you know, back in the days, yeah, I, 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 I got a good prize in the masjid. For some reason, I came first. I don't know how. And so they break, broke up before Ramadan and they gave everybody a prize. And I got a calculator. I was young. Oh, wow. You know, like a calculator was a big thing that those days. It was amazing. Nowadays, we have it in our smartphones and we don't even use it. So if you have your calculator app, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Ummul Mu'mineen, mother of the believers and beloved wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. She said, based on the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you know how many neighbors you have? 40, 40 houses in front of you. 40 houses in front of you are your neighbors. So all these, just imagine, 40 houses, so that's a house in front of you, a house on the other side, then the house in front of that, House on the other side, house in front of that, house on, you keep going 40. 
40 in front of you, then 40 behind you. So 40 that way, 40 that way. How many houses is that? It's quite a lot of houses. Well, you could say that. But then he did not stop there. 40 houses in front of you, 40 behind you. 40 in front, 40 behind, yeah? 40 to your right. Okay, 40 houses to your right. And then 40 houses to your left. So 40 houses to your right, 40 houses to your left. How many houses is that? Does anybody have a number? I, I, I've, I've worked it out, but... Uh, one, 160 is a good number. 160, anybody from the sister's side? I'm sure everybody's on calculators. Okay, let me tell you um, how this is supposed to be calculated. It is not one row of houses 40 that way. It's not one row of houses 40 this way. It's not one column that, that way. Just imagine 40 that way, 40 that way, and then you're doing 40 that way as well. So basically doing 40 plus 40, then you include your own house. Because your own brothers, sisters, parents, whoever lives in that house, they are your neighbors as well. Don't forget them. You've got to treat them like neighbors as well. So don't, <laughs> yeah. So how many is that? That is 81. So you've got 40 on this side and 40 on this side, plus your house again. How many is that? That's 81 again. So 81 that way, 81 that way. So if you look at like a grid, so you've got 81, 81, 81, 81, 81 times. So now, 81, zero out, start from beginning. 81 multiplied by 81. That's an entire city. Whatever number you got, just imagine living in a high-rise block of flats. You've got 40 that way now, and 40 that way. You know, like Abrajil Bait or um, Petronas Towers or somewhere like that. That's an entire city. What number have you got? Anybody got over 6,000? Over 6, Subhanallah. All those are houses in which your neighbors live in. If any one of them on the day of... Just imagine, this is me being strict now. Me being strict on the hadith. If any one of them on the day of judgment says he wasn't a good person. Why? I didn't have food. He didn't come to ask me. I did not have heating. He didn't come, on, come to check on me. I was ill. He did not help me. Just imagine any of those people, Muslim or non-Muslim. We have to respect everybody. The Prophet ﷺ said that Jibreel came. Jibreel. He came and he started telling me the rights of the neighbors so much that I thought they are going to take part of my inheritance as well. There are so many rights for uh, neighbors. If you study, like uh, Brother Karman mentioned, the Muhtasar al Quduri, the, uh, the main primer in Hanifi Fiqh, in that there's an entire chapter based on if you sell your land and your neighbor says, I'm, you're not allowed to sell it, then you're not allowed to sell it. Because he's the neighbor to that land. You know, if this was an Islamic country with the Hanifi Fiqh and you sold your house, to someone 20 miles away, your next door neighbor can stop that. He can say, no, you cannot sell this house. Why? Because I'm the neighbor, I have first right to buy it. These are the rights of neighbors. Who taught us these rights? The beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And there are so many things we can go on talking about, but I think we shall leave that till next time, inshallah. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا A most beautiful example in the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At a time when people used to throw rubbish on their neighbors, when people used to throw thorns on their neighbors, when people used to beat up their neighbors and murder their neighbors and get away with it. At a time when people used to steal things from their neighbors and get away with it. At a time when people used to go into their neighbors' houses and just take over them. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came 
and he gave us this beautiful, beautiful teaching, subhanallah. That's not neighbors, the most beautiful father, like I mentioned, the most beautiful husband, the most beautiful leader, the most beautiful, most of all, forgiver. Everything that went, happened to him. Imagine if any one of those happened to us, would we be willing to forgive? And this is the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, an embodiment of the uh, forgiving nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he is forgiving us here, teaching us that inshallah Allah will forgive us in the akhirah like that. That he is removing our sins here, inshallah Allah will remove our sins in this world and in the next world as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all the brothers for organizing this beautiful event. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to come together, combined and uh, unite under the banner of the love of the beloved sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam again and again so that we can be successful in this world and especially successful in the next world and may we all enter paradise with the beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in the next world under his beautiful banner liwa alhamd aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru li wa lakum wa lisaad al-muslimina wal muslimat wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu just one thing be before I forget, again, uh, this um, today's function the, uh, is, is in honor of Haji Mushtaq Sahib's father who passed away recently. Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. May Allah forgive him of all his major and minor sins and elevated status in the next world. And it is sponsored for him who passed away recently. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive the sins of all the Muslims who have passed away in our families and elevate everybody's sta uh, um, everyone's status, especially us here. I mean, we do dua for others, we should do dua for ourselves as well. I mean, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sallallahu alayka ya Rasool Allah Wa sallam alayka ya Habib Dil roda, e mera dil roda, 
ਜਾਂਦੇ ਜਦੋਂ ਲੋਕੀ ਮਦੀਨੇ ਨੂੰ ਹੁਣ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਆਕਾ ਦੇਦਾਰ ਕਰਾ ਦੇਣਾ ਹੁਣ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਆਕਾ ਦੇਦਾਰ ਕਰਾ ਦੇਣਾ ਔਰ ਮੈਨਾਤ ਤੇਰੀ ਪੜਨਾ ਮੈਂ ਜ਼ਿਕਰ ਤੇਰਾ ਕਰਨਾ ਐਸ ਜ਼ਿਕਰ ਦੀ ਬਰਕਤ ਨਾਲ ਮੇਰੀ ਕਬਰ ਵਸਾ ਦੇਣਾ ਲਜਪਾਲ ਨਬੀ ਮੇਰੇ ਦਰਦਾਂ ਦੀ ਦਵਾ ਦੇਣਾ ਜਦ ਵਕਤ ਨਜ਼ਾਵੇ ਦਾਮਨ ਦੀ ਹਵਾ ਦੇਣਾ ਬਦਰਾਮ ਇਸ ਆਸਟ ਫਾਰ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਸਪੈਸੀਫਿਕਲੀ ਵਿਦ ਦਾ ਸੋ ਦੈਟਸ ਇਟ qamarun 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 sidna nabi qamarun 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 sidna nabi qamarun wa jami جميل يا جميل يا جميل يا جميل هو جميل قمر 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 سيدنا النبي قمر وكف المصطفى كالورد نادي الله الله وكف المصطفى كالورد نادي الله الله وعذرها يبقى اذا مست ايادي الله الله واما نوالها كل العباد واما نوالها كل العباد واما نوالها كل العباد حبيب الله يا خير البرايا قمر 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 سيدنا النبي قمر وجميل 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 سيدنا النبي وجميل ولا ظل له بل كان نورا الله الله ولا ظل له بل كان نورا الله الله تنال الشمس منه والبدور الله الله تنال الشمس منه والبدور الله الله ولم يكن الهدى لولا ظهورا ولم يكن الهدى لولا ظهورا ولم يكن الهدى لولا ظهورا وكل الكون ينار بنور قا ها قمر 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 سيدنا النبي قمر وجميل 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 سيدنا النبي وجميل قمر قمر
Mustafa Jani Rahmat Pela Salam Chamai Bazme Hedayat Pela Salam Chamai Bazme Hedayat Pela Jesu Hani Gari Chamkate Baka Chant Jesu Hani Gari Chamkate Baka Chant Us Dil Faroz Saat Pela Salam Mustafa Jane Rahmat Pela Salam Shamai Bazme Hedayat Ek Mera Yi Rahmat Peda पे दावा नहीं शाह की सारी उम्मत पेला को सलाम मुस्तफा जाने रहमत पेला को सलाम शमाए बज में हिदायत पेला को सलाम या इलाही सद काए आले रसूल ये सलामे Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina maulana muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa ummatihi ajma'in Maulaya salli wa sallim daiman abadan ala habibika khayril khalqi kullihimi Ya akramal khalqi maaliman aludu bihi siwaka inda hudul al-hadith al-amami Oh Allah, just as these beautiful brothers have initiated these beautiful gatherings in this beautiful center, Ya Allah you beautify their lives with the beauty of the seerah and the surah of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O Allah, grant them goodness in this world, grant them goodness in the next world as well, Ya Allah. O Allah, in memory of um, Haji Mushtaq Sahib's noble father, uh, that this uh, function has been, uh, has been celebrated, Ya Allah. O Allah, forgive them of all their major, major or minor sins and elevate their status in the next world, Ya Allah. O Allah, those Muslims who have passed away in our families, O Allah, forgive them of all their major and minor sins, Ya Allah, and Allah, grant them a high status with you in the next world, Ya Allah. O Allah, grant us all a great a high status in this world and in the next world as well, Ya Allah. Give us all the ability to live our lives according to the teachings of the Noble Quran and according to the teachings of the Noble, noble Sunnah of your beloved Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Allah. O Allah, give us the ability to celebrate the Mawlid in its truest form by emulating or attempting to follow the example of your beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O Allah, have your mercy and blessings upon all those people who are gathered here today. Have your mercy and blessings upon all their families, Ya Allah. All those whom they know, whom they do not know. O Allah, give us all the ability to be good to ourselves and to good to others as well, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, aaj ki hamari haazri kubool o manzoor farma. Ya Allah, hum pe jitna, Ya Allah, milad mubarak ke sadiqe mein hum sab pe apna khususi rahm o fazal farma. Ya Allah, agar hum se koi khatayin ho jayin, Ya Allah, tu mua farma. Ya Allah, Quran قرآن و سنت پہ ہم پہ قرآن و سنت ہمیں ہمیں قرآن و سنت کے مطابق زندگی گزارنے کی توفیق عطا فرما یا اللہ ہمیں صحیح معنی میں سچا اور سچا مسلمان بنا یا اللہ ہمیں صحیح معنی میں رسول پاک صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے ساتھ محبت کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرما یا اللہ قیامت والے دن ہم سب کو رسول اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم 
کہ اس کے سنگت میں جنت میں داخل ہونا نصیب فرما یا اللہ یا اللہ ہم سب کو بار بار ایسی محافل منعقد کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرما جن میں تیرے حبیب پاک صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا ذکر ہو تیرا بھی ذکر ہو یا اللہ اور ہم پہ رحمتیں اور برکتیں نازل ہوں یا اللہ اولا ہیو یو مرسی ان بلیسنگز آل دوز پیپل ہو آر فاسٹ وے آل دوز پیپل ہو آر فائنڈنگ اٹ ڈیفیکلٹ ان دس ورلڈ ویدر دے آر مسلم اور نان مسلم اولا ہیو یو مرسی ان بلیسنگز اپ ہون آل دا پیپل اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ یا اللہ اولا دے آر مینی پیپل اسٹک ان مینی فارمز آف ڈیفیکلٹیز آل دا ریمو آل دا ڈیفیکلٹیز آل دا کلامٹیز فرام دم یا اللہ اولا ہیو یو مرسی ان بلیسنگز پرٹیکولرلی اپ ہون دا مسلمز آف دا یو کے ویئر تھنگ life is becoming more and more difficult for them especially in terms of protecting our iman all i give us the ability to protect our iman by practice and by in theory as well ya allah allahumma inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik allahumma rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhab an-nar wa qina adhab al-qard wa qina adhab al-marad wa qina adhab al-mawt wa qina adhab al-qabr wa qina adhab al-hashr wa qina adhab al-mizan هو الحبيب الذي ترجى شفاعته لكل هول من الأحوال مقتحمي وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه ونور عرشه وزينة فرشه سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأمته أجمعين آمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين